Well, welcome to town, first of all. Um, you're here for, for a great benefit. Was this kind of, you know, an easy agreement to come here and do this? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, to be able to come and be a part of, uh, uh, you know, the hospital and what they're doing, raising money for cancer and, and for the uh, firefighters and the first responders, I mean, uh, that, that that's big. And to be able to, you know, just contribute and, uh, you know, make people aware of, uh, of cancer and, and, and what these uh, these people go through is, is it's a great honor. And this recently struck home for you. You just lost mm -hmm. your right, wife recently, and you were the main caregiver. Uh, just talk about going through it. Uh, you have a whole different view of it now, don't you? Well, I have a whole different perspective on, on it. You know, I mean, my wife battled it for 19 months, the, the same tumor that uh, Gary Carter and uh, Bobby Mercer and Johnny Oates, all the guys that I played with and, and, and knew. Um, and, you know, to be a caregiver and, and, and to go through the experience of the 19 months, uh, my heart goes out for, for people now, you know, I mean, uh, I have first-hand experience and so to be able to be a part of an event like this to, to help raise money and, uh, and to be able to use my name 30-something years later after that great game in 78, it's a, it's a special feeling and, and a tremendous honor. What do you think your, your p biggest piece of advice will be tonight to families going through it now that you've been touched by it? Well, I tell you what, the, the biggest thing is is, uh, is don't let a moment go by without sharing your feelings and, you know, and, and telling the person how much you love them. Um, and, you know, just don't let that moment go by or that time go by by not just talking and, 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 and tell them, you know, uh, whatever you want to tell them, whatever's important to you. And uh, uh, that's the biggest thing in the 19 months that uh, I wanted to be able to, to be there to be a part of it, to go through it with her, and let her know that, um, you know, that um, she meant the world to me. And as a family, you're able to do it. Your son and daughter also came home to be with you. Yes, my daughter was coaching at Hofstra. She was assistant softball coach, um, and she stepped down. And my son played for Washington. And uh, when the diagnosis came down, she didn't have much time left. Uh, they both came home to to spend the, the last couple of months with her. And I thought that was a, a tremendous honor and a, and a tribute to them uh, to give up what they their passion was to be able to to be a part and uh, because you don't get those moments back you know I mean uh, so um, I uh, I really have a, a tremendous respect for them you mentioned using your name which mm -hmm. uh, really was branded in that 1978 uh, World Series run MVP mm -hmm. um, does it seem like it's been almost 40 years since that happened no uh, when I see the clip all the time and I run into Mike Torres and Mickey and all those guys and we start talking about it, it seems like just yesterday but uh, uh, in a couple of years, it's going to be 40 years. And, uh, you know, the thing that's great is sports is a game of moments. I had a chance to play in a tremendous organization, the New York Yankees, a team that I wanted to play for, play in big games and, and play in one of the greatest games ever played. Mm -hmm. And that you never forget. You know, that's, that's something that's history. And, uh, you know, just to be a part of that and, uh, and be remembered for it is, uh, is, is a great feeling. And in that rivalry, that Yankee Red Sox, everyone knows that rivalry. To me, as a fan, your moment stands out above all. I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way that it's probably the defining moment in that rivalry. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, as a player and as a kid, you know, when I came with the White Sox, you, you hear about the Yankee rivalry with the Red Sox, but until you're a part of it and you experience it, you really don't know until the first time you take the field in a Red Sox Yankee rivalry and you feel the intensity of the crowds, um, the two cities, what it means to both of them, to both of their fans. And then to be a part of one of the greatest games in history is, is just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful feeling and a, and a tremendous honor to be able to, to walk on the field and say, I, I played in one of the greatest games I ever played. Do you still remember the feeling when ball hit bat on that home run? Absolutely. What was it like? Uh, it was, well, you know, I knew I hit it pretty good, but I didn't know if it was high enough, you know, because there was a little bit of a shadow on the wall. But then when I rounded first base and I knew it was out, you know, I, I said, oh, my God, we're up three to two, you know. But in Fenway, you never, any, anything can happen, so the game's never safe. Uh, all I was saying to myself is we're, we're ahead, mm -hmm. and, and it was a great feeling. I'll never forget rounding third base. And when I touched third base going home, how quiet Fenway was. I mean, you could hear the Yankee fans, but it was just dead silence. I mean, it was like they were just really, really stunned. And they give you a nickname after that. Do you, do you enjoy that nickname? Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, the uh, middle initial, I, I, I love it. You know, it's like a love, hate, respect type thing. And, uh, and even 30 year, 38 years later, I still get a kick out of just joking with them. Right.
And on the other side of the camera as a Red Sox fan, you were worried about this being out of focus? Yeah, I was worried about him blurring me out over there. You know, they're, those, you know he's still a little bit bitter. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get over things easily, do they? No, they don't. But, you know, they they got a little puffy chest now that they right. won three. Yeah, they're 20-something behind, though, aren't they? They're a long ways behind. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 you, do you miss the, the, the locker room, the, the game? How do you stay active and, 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 you know, keep your kind of competitive nature, if you will? Well, you know, I do a lot of, still do a lot of things corporately for the Yankees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I follow baseball, um, not quite as much as I, I used to. It, it's still a great game. Um, my son plays for the Washington Nationals, so I go watch him play, and I'm, I'm still around it, you know, but uh, it's, um, it's just, it, it, when it's in your blood, it doesn't really ever go away, you know, and, and I miss the camaraderie of the guys, but again, you know, we have the, the fantasy camp, which we just did about, you know, a week ago, and then, you know, we have the old timers day where you get back and you see the guys that you played with and hear all the stories and they get bigger and better every year. Last thing for you, I look at that, that the 70s Yankees Red Sox rivalry, it, 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 I don't know if it'll ever be the same. It seemed nasty, it seemed ugly, and maybe because I was a kid, that was the greatest time. What was it like being inside of that? Well, it was fantastic. I mean, it was intense. You know, the two teams didn't like each other, but they respected each other. The intensity of the towns, you know, the Red Sox fans, the Yankee fans, when, you know, you're playing in New York, the electricity of the crowd in Yankee Stadium, Fenway, the crowds there, you know, um, it was more of an intense rivalry. But I think now because of free agency and guys moving around, um, it's probably not quite as intense as it used to be. Mm -hmm. But when, when the first time I ever played in Fenway in, in my first one, I, I felt it. You know, you just feel it. And it's a, and it's a, it's a neat feeling. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Pleasure. Pleasure. So this is our 12th anniversary of our sports gala, and um, this event is specifically for first responders. All first responders um, in the state of Connecticut, firemen, law enforcement, um, 911 dispatchers, and their families. And the money that we raise here will help them with financial assistance for bills, mortgages, utility bills. Most all first responders are very humble, and they really don't like to ask for assistance, but we want to let them know that we're here for them. The swim is here for them. Um, the swim is celebrating 29 years this year, swim across the sound. And as I said, this event has been going on strong for 12 years. I need to thank Anthem, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, who's been our title sponsor for the 12 years. And um, we have many, many firemen and policemen um, and EMTs that will be here tonight. And some of them have been recipients mm -hmm. of the swim funds, and we're happy to be able to raise money and support them. So for all 12 years, it's been for first responders? For all 12 years, it's been for first responders, yes. And to, and to have a name like a Bucky Dent, a Doc Good, and a Mookie Wilson, I mean, boy, just I mean, it just, just really takes the event and puts it over the top. It takes the event and puts it over the top. And people come to the event to support the event, but also to support our guest speaker. And this year, particularly because of Bucky, and I have to say, I am a Red Sox fan. Sorry about that. You don't have to be sorry. <laughs> and I know exactly where I was when he hit that home run. I hate to say it. What but do you I, call him? I, I, I call him Bucky. And he's, very gra he's been very gracious tonight. <laughs> and he's really a gem. And it was really a pleasure to meet him. And I am forever grateful that he decided to come and you know, be part of it. And I might add, and I know he spoke about this, we do give a caregiver award every year. It's called the David Fellner Caregiver Award. It's um, named in memory of a Stratford firefighter mm -hmm. that uh, lost his battle with cancer in 2002. And when I met Bucky tonight, he told me he was a caregiver as well, you know, to his wife, mm -hmm. who has since passed away of cancer. So he, having him as our guest really closes the loop for us tonight because he understands why we're raising money and how important it is um, for cancer patients and the care that they're receiving and how we can help them. How much money have you raised over the years? Oh, for probably for, for this event, we raise close to $80,000 every year, so 80,000 times 12. And for all the swim events you know, that we do every year, we raise probably close to $2 million a year. And it cul culminates in July when we have our marathon, um, and that's the swim from Port Jefferson, New York, to Captain's Cove. Um, you have 160 swimmers and 110 boats. Mm -hmm. So it's um, a wonderful cause. And the SWIM and St. Vincent's Medical Center Foundation and the hospital, we do a lot of wonderful work. And the cancer care that we give at the hospital is beyond none. Thank you. So.